uh, we're probably most commonly known for being a, a leading provider of enterprise storage. But if you don't mind, let me just give you two quick examples of specific solutions that we actually provide to, to provide value to our customers. So let's say that you had a SQL server, right? And that SQL server had a particular database. Now, that database is stored typically on fast drives. It's going to be 15K drives and so on. So, but what happens is that that entire database is now locked into that 15K drive type. Now, when you look inside the database, the database may have hotspots, which is where you know, the majority of the access happens. They're warm spots and cold spots. Okay? So what uh, we can do as something a little bit different for enterprise storage is we can have an array that has multiple tiers of storage. It may have solid state drives as tier one. It may have 15K drives as tier two, and then maybe 10K drives as tier three. So we can actually carve out a logical unit across all those tiers and provide that to SQL. So now what's going to happen is that the hotspots on that database now bubble up to, to the solid state drives. The, the warm spots may go through to the 15K drives and the cold spots would actually go down to the, to the uh, 10K drives. Okay? So you get two big benefits. You basically get much better speed improvements on SQL because now the hotspots are being serviced by solid state drives and you're getting uh, space and, and cost efficiencies because now the other spots are basically going to the relevant tier of storage. Right? Second quick example would be the fact that let's say that one of our customers purchases one of our arrays. Now when they want to deploy more storage, they're basically wanting to deploy storage on this new array. But what happens with all these legacy arrays that they currently have? Well, typically they'll end up retiring them in a relatively short time span, maybe two or three years. So what we can do with our solution is we can essentially encapsulate all of the storage from these legacy arrays and republish them out from our arrays. When we do that, we can now leverage all of the features and functionality of the new array that they've just purchased, such as dynamic tiering that I've just explained, and therefore it greatly extends the lifetime of the legacy systems that they actually have. So they, they get big TCO results from that too. We think the value of our relationship really comes down through to a business strategy that we're big believers in, right? And that's that the whole is bigger than the sum of the parts. So if we look at someone we both know, say Microsoft, for example, okay, they have a number of really good products, right? They've got SQL, SharePoint, uh, uh, Link and Exchange and all these types of products. They're great products unto themselves, but if you pick a product, say Exchange, Exchange has really deep hooks into SharePoint for collaboration. It's got really deep hooks into Link for IM and, and uh, uh, desktop sharing and, and VoIP and all that kind of functionality. It's got deep hooks into Office. So by deploying, the more Microsoft products you deploy, the better your total cost of ownership becomes because these things really meld well together, right? Now, if we look at what, what we do, um, our Hitachi content platform allows you to essentially uh, optimize your SharePoint environment by bridging through AppPoint, the AppPoint solution. But we also have 80, over 85 actual solutions that go beyond SharePoint. So from everything from you know, optimizing your files through to document management and all this kind of thing. And uh, so therefore, by deploying that one platform, you now get your, your TCO gets better over and over and over again because we're now deploying across 85 different solutions. So the reason that we value our relationship with that point is because we see that we kind of kindred spirits, if you like, right? Because you guys, when you approach this, you say, let's assist customers with SharePoint. Yes, you have this RBS offloading technology that, that we interact with, but on top of that, you've got deployment, you've got administration, you've got, you've got replication, uh, auditing, reporting, and all of this extra benefits that the customers can get all from one product. You, you can use AppPoint to point uh, the RBS offloading solution through to any type of storage, right? The, the reality though is that storage is not all created equal. And our solution gives a lot of intelligence through to this object store that we basically can, can provide to customers. So a couple of examples there, and I, I could actually mention lots of them, but uh, one of them is that the solution itself has, let's call them, multiple brains within them. And each one of these brains has multiple connection points coming up. So we can leverage those multiple connection points from both a fault tolerance and a high availability and, and actually a load balancing aspect as well because each brain, the least busy brain, is the one that ends up responding. Now, that alone not only gives you the high availability and fault tolerance, but the reality is that the drives that we install in the Hitachi Content Platform are not tier one disks. Let's call them tier four disks, right? They're relatively slower, but larger drives. So customers always ask us, like, well, hang on, how, how does that work? Because if I'm taking files from SharePoint and SQL, which are on tier one disk, and then we're deploying it on to slower disks, isn't that going to slow my performance? The reality is that testing has showed that uh, across multiple different solutions, that it's actually the opposite. They get a speed improvement 
because even though it's on slower disks, we've got multiple connections coming up. And our system can scale from four nodes all the way up to 80 of these brains that I've talked about before, and can scale all the way up to 40 petabytes of information as well. Okay? Uh, another example would be the fact that we can store multiple copies of the actual blob content. So not only can you have dual copies at one location, but you can also have a third or fourth copy at a remote DR location as well. So now it gives you high availability in DR for the actual blob content itself. Another one is that we, we actually take digital fingerprints of the actual blobs when they're ingested into our environment. So now if the blob was to, for some reason, become corrupt at a later point in time, the digital fingerprint would no longer match. But since we have multiple copies, we can grab a good copy and seamlessly overwrite and heal the one that became corrupt. Okay? We also have immutability of the actual content. So if you have legal restrictions or compliance that says you cannot delete the content for, let's say, 20 years, then you can define an immutability period of 20 years and you're guaranteed that none of those copies are going to be able to be altered. So when we unify those three things together, the fact that we have self-replication, we have self-healing, and we have immutability, that actually uh, uh, gives birth through to a pretty interesting concept, which is the concept of a backupless environment, which means that since it's immutable and you've got multiple copies and it's self-healing, there's no real need to actually take a conventional backup of that content. Right? And that can greatly reduce the burdens that you have. The, the last example that I'll, that I'll mention here is the fact that with all of the, du the duplication that actually happens within SharePoint, it's actually fairly rampant because when people upload content to SharePoint, they upload it through to multiple different sites. Okay? So the duplication is higher on SharePoint than it would be on a conventional file server, for example. So by leveraging the outpoint blob of loading technology and storing it on the Hitachi content platform, now we can leverage both compression and dedupe. Right? And what we've seen uh, is somewhere between a 30 to 50% uh, space saving overall by leveraging compression and dedupe functionality. Thing. There's actually a lot of uh, features and functionality in SharePoint that we, we're actually fans of. Um, one of them would be the fact that the, the mobile experience is being improved across different platforms. So it's nice that Microsoft have woken up to the fact that not everybody uses Internet Explorer and Internet Explorer alone. So people use iPhones and Android devices and so on. So uh, that and the apparently native apps that are coming for all these platforms as well, we believe that's going to really assist productivity for the mobile workforce. Uh, that would be one. Another important one would be search. Uh, there's been studies by IDC, for example, that have shown that search is, is really quite bad when it comes to the collaborative types of solutions. Uh, in the past, we've had the fact that people tend to spend 40% of their time looking for content, and unfortunately, seven times out of 10 will recreate the content rather than re-leveraging an existing piece of content that's already been done, uh, which obviously is a huge waste of productivity. So now with the new uh, search technology, it's been greatly improved. It has recommendations. The engine itself is much better. So we're really hopeful that's going to uh, assist customers with improving.